Okay, so you're done with your MCQ and you're launching into the structured questions. The first one that you meet, question number two, is going to be a forces question. It's quite a highly weighted question. It's going to be worth maybe 18, 19, 20 plus marks. And so there's going to be some easy aspects to it and some that will be a bit more challenging. So I want to give you two hints and tips just in terms of how you would tackle a question like this. The first one is a very simple one. You probably got this waxed, but just to make sure, um, this is from grade 11, is creating an N two expression. So Newton's second law expression all around F equals MA. So take any object, if there's forces acting on it, let's say this has got 20 Newtons pushing it to the right and five Newtons to the left, friction or something like that. The question could be, well, what's F net? Now you look at that and you think, well, that's dead easy. It's just 20 minus five, it's 15. But if it was in algebra, it can get a little bit more tricky uh, when you don't have the numbers there. So this is where we have to think of it as an expression rather than just an answer. So let's just call it FA and FF for now. So how do we find the F net? Well, there's actually two ways, and this is what we do when we bring this expression together. On the one hand, we've got our diagram, which can give us an expression for F net, just like we did there. It's the applied force minus the frictional force. Okay? Then, of course, we've got Newton's second law itself. F net equals M A. Now both of those are expressions for F net. So they're exactly equal to each other. So in our working, we'd usually start with F net equals M A itself and then bring together these two things and say, well, F A minus F F equals M A. There's our expression. Now if we've got values, like in this case we had 20 and 5 and let's call it a 3 kg object, then you could put all that in and say, well, 20 minus 5 equals 3 times A, and away you go. So that's the simplistic view of putting together the diagram information and Newton's second law to give ourselves a mathematical expression. Now, where we use this is when we dive into the deep end. Right now, solving a two-body problem, which is almost inevitably what you're going to get. It's going to be Something like this little Tommy pulling his train along the floor uh, with the two carriages. Something like that. It's probably going to, could, could, could well be on a slope. So I'm just giving a simple example now to get some ideas. Um, let's put some figures here. A is 2 kgs. B is 3 kgs. Tommy pulls with 25 newtons. And there's a bit of friction, 4 and 6 respectively, on A and B. Now the question would go on to ask perhaps something like, uh, well, what's the acceleration of the system? Or what is the tension in the string between A and B? So how do we tackle a question like this? Think of it as a four-step solution. First step is not one for marks, but it's for you to get a visual of what's going on. You want to be able to see stuff. So annotate the diagram that they've given, or you can sketch your own either way. But the key, the key thing is you want a good visual of all the forces acting on each object. So I'm going to just going to do some annotations here. We know that, that both objects have FG acting on them. And therefore, the surface is pushing back with an Fn. We've got the tension, sorry, the applied force already. Then there's tension in the string, pulling back on the three, pulling forward on the two. And we are told that there's friction in either case. So then I'll put another little arrow near the bottom there, FFA and FFB. Is that it? Have a look, have a think. Yes, that's it. Okay, so we, the first step is really just a quick sketch of all the forces acting so that you know what's going on. Then we take all that information, and the second step is going to be doing a free body diagram or free body diagrams. They will actually ask you for one almost inevitably, but our suggestion is do both of them, one for each object. Okay, get all the details right, make, your, make sure your labels are clear. Etc. Uh, Etc. Et Let's give it a whirl. So object number object A. Um, I, I always would draw a reasonably sized dot. Okay, we got our normal that we said was acting upwards. Then we got our gravity that was acting downwards, same size as the normal. Then we got our friction that was acting to the left. FFA, and we got our tension to the right. Not sure how those compare, so that's that's just fine like that. Then B, once again, we've got gravity and normal. Okay, I'm sketching a little bit too fast. Be careful of little silly mistakes like like that, uh, where my lines are not connecting properly. That would possibly lose me marks. 
Uh, then we've got our 25 newtons applied force. And then we've got two forces to the left for B. So we've got our tension and we've got our friction. Okay. And if I'd done it as such with just letters, um, that's not enough for marks in, the, in this paper. So what we need to do is then put a little key, something like that, on the right-hand side just to show exactly which, what, what each of those forces are. So we've got a force diagram to see what's going on, free body diagrams to get that nice and clear for each object, and then, nice and simple, you put together our Newton second law expression, just like we learned just now. So we're going to use F equals MA. Let's just do the first one. Um, we would say F net equals MA. Don't forget to write that down because that's worth a mark. Then we're going to ignore our vertical forces in this case because they cancel each other out and we're on a horizontal plane. If it's on a slope, you can't do that. You'd have to think of components of gravity, etc. But in this case, it's nice and simple. The tension minus the friction is going to give us MA. Now, we were told some values. We don't know what T is, but we knew that FF was 4 for A. And the mass of A is uh, 2 kgs. So something like that. We can simplify and say, well, T is equal to 2A plus 4. We're going to do the same for B. I'm not going to go through the whole thing now. But at the end of the day, you're going to end up with two unsolved question, equations. OK, because you don't have enough information for either of them to be able to solve the question. Obviously, once you've got equa equation 1 and equation 2, it makes quite obvious where things are going, we're going to end up solving this simultaneously. So bring the values together, sub in one into the other, and boom, away you go. It's as simple as that. Cool. I think you need to do some practice. Enjoy.